All right, folks, one of the reasons that we're going to talk about vertical motion problems. One of the reasons that we bother to learn the quadratic formula is because it's very useful in the world of physics and engineering. In physics, because we live on the planet Earth, there is a thing called gravity, which affects the way they fall from the air onto the ground. And this, they can be summarized by talking about vertical motion problems. And you'll talk about these in physics as well. So there is this wonderful formula that is, um, in this particular case, completely American, could be used on any planet in the world. And it says something like the height of an object after t seconds is equal to negative one half the great gravitational force times the time it's been in the air squared plus its initial velocity times the time it's been in the air plus its initial height. So those are some components. Um, on Earth, we will always use a gravitational constant of 32. I don't know who discovered that, but pretty cool. Time is going to be, uh, it's like x, that is our independent variable. Height depends on time and is our dependent variable. So this will be along a y-axis. The t would be along an x-axis if we were graphing this. The v of zero is our initial velocity or the initial speed if you wanna think of it that way. And the h of zero is just the height of the object when it begins its motion. So I'm gonna call that initial height. And this formula can be used to solve all sorts of cool problems. The one we're gonna look at today starts with Miss Taylor throwing Mr. Modesty's phone off a building 80 feet above the sidewalk with an initial upward velocity of eight feet per second. We're gonna to try to calculate how long it will take for the phone to reach the ground. So the first thing I notice is that my initial height is 80 feet. So Taylor is already up on the roof when she throws this or on the top of a building or somewhere way up high. My initial velocity or my speed is going to be eight feet per second. And this was pretty easy because it's right next to the word velocity. Sometimes it will be a little more obscure than that. Um, I take the little helps that I have when I get them. So in this case, V of zero can be substituted with an eight. My initial height can be substituted with 80 feet. And what I'll notice is that um, in my generic formula, it's negative one half. We're on Earth, so that would be negative one half of 32, and that's where the negative 16 comes from. So from here, if I want to figure out what time will this, or after how many seconds will the phone hit the ground, I'm going to need to use the quadratic formula. All right, so in this particular case, oh, I guess I wanted myself to write it again. In this case, my A value is this one, my B value is eight, and my C value is 80. I'm going to substitute into the quadratic equation, which is B squared minus the square root of four. Oh, Lord square root of b squared, this is not square. Oh, good grief. Starting over, it's negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus four times a times c, all divided by two times a. And I'll put a number there instead of a variable. I am a spaz, that's certifiable, negative 16. Okay, so my A is negative 16. I'm gonna substitute that here as well. My B value was a positive eight. And lastly, my C value was 80. All right, so if I simplify all these lovely little things, then I end up with negative eight plus or minus the square root and my discriminant turns out to be 5,184, which is a big number, 
all of which is being divided by negative 32. Pardon my goofball mistake over here. Um, hope you'll forgive me for that. So now I have it simplified and I, well, I have it sort of simplified. From here, I need to break it into my baby equations. I'm going to look at the first one, which is the positive square root of 5,184, which, folks, comes out to be 72, wasn't that convenient, divided by negative 32. And my other solution will be at negative 8 minus 72 divided by negative 32. This lovely quantity comes out to, it's this one, yes, this one comes out to a negative 2. And this one comes out to a 2.5. Checking my notes there. All right, so this one makes perfect sense. So the phone will land after 2.5 seconds. I'm going to write that. Phone lands after 2.5 seconds. What does this one mean? How can time be negative? Well, this is what we call an extraneous solution. Algebraically, it is absolutely a solution. But in the context of this problem, this makes no sense. So we call it extraneous. And you encountered extraneous solutions when you were in geometry as well. One way to think of this is that um, in, in this scenario, perhaps Ms. Taylor had to actually take an elevator to get up to the 80 foot mark before throwing the phone. I suspect that um, Ms. Taylor in her elevator was not traveling at eight feet per second, so it probably took her a little bit longer than this, but if you think about what these solutions represent, these solutions represent uh, object being thrown from up here. So those are my two solutions. So here's Ms. Taylor throwing the phone. Now I'm going to give her a cute little skirt. She's got her arms. She's lovely hair. And she's throwing the phone off of the building. The building starts right here. It lands after 2.5 seconds. And the extraneous solution just represents the other side of this parabola. But it doesn't really make any sense in the context of this problem. All right, so that's how we can use vertical motion formula to help us solve real world equations. I wanted to take a moment to just look at the quadratic methods we have so far for finding solutions. We have factoring, which is GCF, the difference of two squares, factoring your trinomial with grouping. I usually try those first. If I can't find solutions by factoring, perhaps I can try graphing. I can use square roots, which we talked about a couple of class periods ago. We could use completing the square, which we will get to soon, or we can use the quadratic formula. So that is your repertoire of methods for coming up with the solutions to a quadratic equation. That's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed tossing phones off of buildings. I don't recommend trying that at home, and I hope to see you again soon.